Hey everybody, it's the Burger Dude, and today I want to show you how I make a Philly cheesesteak, but vegan, of course. Now, originally from Philadelphia, this sandwich is typically made with finely sliced or chopped steak with onions, if you like, and then provolone or cheese whiz. I think it's important to know yourself, especially in regards to cheese, and I know I'm a cheese whiz kind of guy, so that's what we're making today. And today, we've got two ways to make the steak part, the quick and easy way, and the not as quick, but in my opinion, way better way. The former being with some store-bought plant-based meat and the latter with some soy curls. Yes, if you haven't noticed, this is a soy curl stand page and I have no regrets about it. But before we get started, if you do live in the LA area and don't feel like making your own cheesesteaks, my buddy Brian has a new vegan cheesesteak spot called Avenue 26. I'll leave a link in the description for more info, so if you're interested, head on over there. But for now, we're gonna make our own, so let's start with the soy curl-based cheesesteak. And if you don't know what soy curls are, look in the description. I'll leave a link for some more info on them as well, but they are super awesome, super versatile. And I know some folks in the UK told me that they don't have soy curls, but I believe that there's like soya chunks, some sort of TVP sort of product. So if you have something similar to this, it'll totally work just as well, I would imagine at least. So what we're gonna do is throw together a marinade. This is gonna be kind of similar to the French dip that I did a couple months back. A little bit different, but pretty much the same idea. We're just gonna take a bunch of umami, sort of beefy sort of flavors, and then we're gonna make that marinade to cook and reduce the soy curls in. So we got some Worcestershire sauce. Just make sure it's vegan. Uh, just check the back. Sometimes they got anchovies in there. This is some mushroom seasoning. I'll leave a link in the description for that as well since it's not super duper common. Uh, some steak sauce. Use whatever you like. You could use A1 is actually uh, vegan. I'm fairly certain at least the stuff out in the U.S. is. And then we're going to do some balsamic vinegar. I always say balsamic, but I think it's balsamic. And we're going to do some molasses. I'm actually going to do two teaspoons here, and later we're going to add another teaspoon. That's going to be for color, but also for flavor as well. And then some tomato paste, of course. Lastly, we're going to throw in some onion powder, some garlic powder, and I believe some smoked paprika. There you go. And then we're going to give that a whisk. And around this time, it should be about 10 minutes. So our soy curls have been hydrated. So now we just want to get them in a colander and just squeeze out any of that water that you can. Just take out all your aggression. And next we want to dice up a whole onion. I'm using a sweet onion. And we're going to grill that over some medium heat for about 10 or 15 minutes. We're not really looking to caramelize the onions. We just want to get them translucent, maybe a little bit of color. But for the most part, these are grilled onions. And if you want to take the 20, 30 plus minutes to caramelize onions, feel free, be my guest. But for me, this is good enough. Now I'm making this for my girlfriend and she has a onion allergy. So I'm removing the onions for now so that I can cook the soy curls separately. If that's not an issue for you, then feel free to just leave the onions in and add the soy curls in. Otherwise, do what I'm doing right here. And we're going to reduce this down. And like I said before, we're going to add in a little bit of molasses. And that's just going to help it get a little bit of a darker color. And we just want to reduce this. And at this point, just taste it once it's reduced. If it needs more salt, add more soy sauce or just use some salt. Pepper is always good. I believe I threw in some salt, pepper, and yep, some cayenne. Cayenne is always nice. It's not going to really make it spicy. It's just going to give it a little bit, just a tiny little kick, like a like a like just a, a baby kick. So there you go, some salt and pepper, and this was good. This takes about, I don't know, 15 minutes to put together. It comes together really, really quick. I'm gonna throw in half of my onions, and this was super dang good. But before we dig into this, I'll show you the even easier way to make this, and we're just gonna be using some plant-based meat. I'm using Impossible, but you could use Beyond or whatever you like. And this was, I mean, this is almost so easy that I don't really feel like I need to make a video for it. Uh, but just for, you know, shits and giggles or shiggles. I shouldn't say shiggles. That's awful. Um, I said it already. I guess I could edit it out or I could just leave it in. I'm going to leave it in. So if you have a little bit of stuff sticking, that's called the fawn. You want to just throw in some water to deglaze it. Those are really tasty bits. And just cook your plant-based meat until it looks something like that. Give it some salt and pepper, season it however you like. And there you go, that's a super quick and easy way to throw together you know, the steak for your cheesesteak. And now we wanna get our cheese whiz together. So we're gonna do 
pretty much the exact same thing that I did last week with my hamburger helper for the cheese sauce. I know normally I say to grate your own cheese and use something like this. However, I tried it with the Daya. It didn't come out that great. What it does come out good with is this VO Life pre-shredded stuff. This is kind of my new favorite cheese for a cheese sauce, especially the way that we're going to make it with the sodium citrate. Uh, if you didn't see the last week's video, essentially sodium citrate is an emulsifier and it really makes the cheese just super smooth and creamy. I know I hate saying smooth and creamy. Those are awful words to describe food. I'm sorry. At least I didn't say moist. It's not moist. Ooh, you don't want your cheese sauce to be. I mean, technically it is moist, but you don't want to describe a cheese sauce as moist. I'm getting off the subject. The point is it makes the cheese sauce super awesome. So. If you want to use the sodium citrate, you're gonna get an awesome cheese sauce. If you don't wanna use the sodium citrate, you could totally throw in just like a little bit of unsweetened plant milk. You're not gonna get that kind of texture though. I've made it a cheese sauce before with just plant milk, cheese, and cheese. It's, it's good, it's serviceable. It's not like that though. So I really do highly recommend the sodium citrate. Now, on to the bread. From everything I've gathered, a lot of folks don't consider something a Philly cheesesteak unless it's on an Amoroso roll. Luckily, I found some at the local Smart and Final here in Burbank, California. But before that, I called up a cheesesteak place down the street called Philly's Best to see if I could buy some from them. And well, it went a little something like this. Philly's Best. Uh, hi, yeah, I was just wondering, um, do you just sell the rolls by themselves? What? I, I was just, you know, do you just sell the rolls? Um, uh, hey, Bobby, do we just sell the rolls? What? Uh, this guy wants to know if we just sell the rolls by themselves. No! No, sorry. So, that was obviously a recreation, but literally that's what the phone call sounded like. Um, so yeah, uh, Philly's Best did not want to help me out. So luckily I did find some of these at Smart and Final, like I said. If you can't find the Amorosos, just use whatever sandwich roll you got. But these things are pretty fantastic. I can see why people, and these are like the store-bought ones. I mean, I imagine the fresh ones are even better. So anyways, load it up with some of your soy curl steak. And now I'm trying to get that cheese sauce in there. And I was a little, maybe a little overzealous with the cheese here, but it turned out all right. I mean, I mean, look at that sauce. Look at just how, I don't want to say smooth and creamy again, but man. <laughs> I'm sorry, but look at it. So freaking phenomenal. And yeah, looks a little messy, but you know what? It turned out great. I mean, I literally ate, I mean, you're gonna see me eat about three of these. I ate like six of these over the course of a few days under the guise of, oh, I really gotta, I gotta do it again. I didn't get the perfect shot. I That first shot was fine. I just wanted an excuse to eat more of these cheesesteaks because they're so freaking phenomenal. So here we go. We're gonna do the impossible uh, one. And uh, you know, maybe I'm biased, uh, but I really liked the soy curl one better. This just kind of tastes like, it tastes, it's like a cheeseburger, cheese steak i don't know it's 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 almost like uh a chopped cheese meets a, a cheese steak sort of thing i don't want to say that because i think i'll probably make some people mad but that's really what it, it's just impossible tastes like impossible whereas the soy curl steak tasted like steaky it had like a really unique kind of sort of flavor whereas impossible beyond and impossible they just they taste like beyond and impossible now don't get me wrong it was still delicious i still ate this entire thing without even flinching uh, but, you know, if push came to shove, I would definitely choose the soy curl based cheesesteak over this one. And also, I polled a few people on Instagram, some people from Philly, and said, is it blasphemous to put this hoagie spread on a cheesesteak? I would say about 30% of them said yes. The other 70% said, I put that sort of stuff on my cheesesteak all the time. Put whatever you want on a cheesesteak. Don't listen to people about rules. And you know what? This stuff is phenomenal. It's a little spicy, a little sweet, and it just cuts through everything, and it just is perfect. It really is. So if you want to up your cheesesteak, I suggest putting on some of this hoagie spread or something similar. Either way, I hope you all make this recipe. I'm really, really super stoked on it. Honestly, like if I was ever gonna open up a restaurant, which I'm never going to, but if I was, I would probably make this sort of stuff for sure would be high on the list of things that I would put on the menu. But if you do make it, let me know how it went. I hope you're all doing great. Tag me in your photos on Instagram and I'll see you next week.